All right, what is up, YouTube? So, I'm working on my project still, and uh, came across a problem that took me a while to figure out, so I figured it was worth making a video on. Uh, quickly, just kind of show you uh, what I was trying to do, and then I will get into how I did it. Um, so, this is my project right now. It's basically a um, quick overview of my whole project is I have an FX program here that is basically just going to be an interface for um, creating customers and appointments and basically just kind of linking them all together and then viewing them. So I have a few different menus. Right now what I was working on is my appointments. So this is going to be my appointment kind of menu or scene. And what I wanted to do is basically have my combo box of customers here. And when I clicked on the customer in the drop down, I wanted it to display the appointments that are associated with that customer's ID in this table. And um, basically what went into this is one, getting my combo box to hold all of my customers. And then after that, it was basically taking a list of all the appointments, which I already had a method that pulled all the appointments from my database. And I wanted to filter that list with by customer ID. So I wanted to be able to say, this is the customer ID. Give me all the appointments that match that customer ID. And um, as you can see, I was able to do that. I do need to move this scene around so that I can actually see all these titles. It's a little irritating, but that'll be later. Um, but you can see as I go through my drop down of customers, it displays the customer's appointments. And if the customer doesn't have appointments, it just doesn't show anything. All right, so let's get into the code that made that work. Um, I am by no means an expert at this, so I don't know if the way that I did it is correct, but it works, so I figured it was worth um, showing you. So right here inside of my uh, appointment controller, this is what controls that scene that you guys just saw, or that window that you just saw. Um, I have here an on action method for my combo box, and inside of that on action method, I am basically just calling this public void method that I have down here. Um, all this code could go inside the on action method, but in the um, off chance that I want to update that table through some other means, I like to have it in its own separate method. So moving on to this method, I have here an observable list of appointments. The appointment class is what is going to be displayed in that table. So that is the object or the class that I want in this observable list. And I have all appointments. So what I'm doing here basically is I'm using another class I have over here, which is my DB appointments. And you can see over here I have um, a couple different DB um, classes. They're all inside my DB access um, package. And what these do is this: these are all used to pull information from my database because I'm using um, a SQL database, which I can actually show you guys. Just throw this up here real quick. So this is the database that I'm using. Um, not going to show too much of that, but essentially that database holds all my information and these classes here pull information from that database. So I have that class basically, um, I'm using a method from that class to get all my appointments. Like I said before, this basically takes all the appointments in my database and it puts them into uh, an object right here for me or an observable list for me here. And then what I wanted to do was take this list and filter it by um, by customer ID, which is what I did on the bottom, the next line here. So on the next line, I created a filtered list of appointments. Now this filtered list um, class is basically you know similar to an observable list, but it does exactly kind of like what the name infers. Um, it filters a list for you. So it was a little tricky to figure out how to use this, but this is how I did it. So I have a filtered list of appointments, and then I have the name of the list, and then I had it set equal to a new filtered list, and then inside of here, the very first argument that you have is basically the list that you want to filter. So my all appointments list, which is the list I created right above it, is what I want to filter, because that's all my, appoint all my appointments. And then you do basically this little I dash, this little I and arrow, and then from there, I guess this I represents the list itself. 
or maybe the objects inside the list. I think that's what it does. This I must represent the objects inside the list um, because then you can go I dot and then take whatever parameter from that, um, that object that you want. So in my case, I wanted the customer ID. And then all I had to do from there is basically make, say that, um, because after this, after this initial statement here that you have where you're like, all right, I want to filter this list. This is the list I want to filter. After that, you have to have kind of like a Boolean argument. So in my case, I wanted to get my customers, um, the customer ID, and then I wanted to set it, I wanted to say if it equals this, um, you know, so after that I have the customer combo box, which this is that combo box that holds my customers. And then I get the selection model, which basically would be, I'd get the customer model that's inside it. And then I can get selected item, which will give me the actual customer um, itself that is selected. And then I can get the customer ID. Now, there is, from what I saw online, there was a lot of there was a lot of kind of confusing stuff surrounding comparing two integers, which essentially that's what these are. Um, these are private integer parameters inside of each class. My, um, however, I th I mean this works obviously. If you guys are watching this video and you have a better way to do this, then leave it in the comments. Let me know. Um, and again, this may not work in every single scenario because. Uh, I saw a lot of things online that were talking about um, comparing integers and how it can how it can get kind of dicey um, when it when you compare them. I don't think that using this little equal operator um, is really the preferred way to do it, but I couldn't figure out another way to do it. So um, that is how I set up my filtered list, and you can do it um, different ways. So if I wanted to do this by um, let me look at my appointments real quick and see what other kind of um, see what other parameters it has. So I could do it by a string. So if I wanted to do it by location, then I could do um, all appointments and then I just do this and dot get location and that would give me a string. And if I did get location, I think after that, instead of doing this equal operator, I could do um, actually I could try it right now. So if I say like get location, which is a string, I should be able to do dot equals. And then you could put in whatever string you want. Um, so that's what you would want to do in the case of using a string. But because I am using the ID, um, I didn't have that option. You can't do equals with, an, uh, with the integer. The integer um, integers don't have that dot equals method. But anyway, um, I just wanted to show that and s show you guys kind of how basically how to filter an observable list in Java. That is how I did it. Um, everything below this is basically just setting up all of my my uh, table. So this is my table view, and you just do set items, and then you set it to whatever list you want to have, which is going to be this list, this filtered list that I created. And then you go, to, you have to go through each column. And you set do basically set val uh, set cell value factory, and then just make sure that these um, these here line up with whatever your um, whatever your parameters are inside of your class. Uh, I think that's I think that's basically all I kind of wanted to touch on in this video. Um, leave some comments below. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me if there's other ways to do this. If you guys know better ways to do this. If this worked in your case. Um, I'm making this video again too because I saw a lot of, I looked up basically how to filter an observable list in Java. And I got a lot of different videos that weren't, you know, super helpful. And uh, didn't really show me exactly how to use this filter list um, class. So uh, hopefully this will be a good addition to the rest of the information that's out there on YouTube and the internet. Um, but yeah, again, just let me know what you guys think.